So for the scripture reading, um, my uh, mother-in-law, Diane Redmond, is going to read uh, the scripture uh, for us this morning, and it's in your bulletin um, there as well. So if you'd like to follow along, taken from Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33, 7 to 9. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear a word from my mouth and then warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall, shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity but you have delivered your soul. Amen. Solemn, isn't it? It goes to show how important it is to, um, to reach out to those around us. <clears throat> uh, so the sermon today, um, do you like roses or thorns? Thank you. How many like thorns? Raise your hand. Oh, we got one person. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> um, you know, as, uh, as Christians, and I'm going to get back to the rose bush, don't worry. As Christians, we're all called to represent Christ. Uh, and it's very important that we do that, um, not only for our uh, salvation, but for those around us. So before I continue, I'd like to have a, a little word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you for this time that we have together. And I pray for your Holy Spirit to guide and, and lead us, that I will say what you want me to say, and that everyone will hear what you want them to hear. And I pray that we'll be drawn closer to you as a result of being here today, and be ready for your soon coming. In Christ's name, amen. Um, you know, we, <clears throat> we all know that the end is near. We see evidence of it all the time. There's constantly records being broken for this, that, and the other thing when it comes to catastrophes and, and all kinds of stuff that's happening. We know what the Bible prophesies. We know we can see the events happening before us. And, and we know there's challenges um, facing each one of us. And we know that there's difficulties coming. But we also know that the Bible promises that God is going to be with us always. And he's going to help us through each and every step. But it's important that we keep our focus on Christ because it's so easy to get distracted it's so easy to allow things around us um, to impact us. And that can be, you know, it could be our family. It could be our, the leaders in our church or other church members. It could be our conference leaders. It could be the world leaders. You know, it could be anybody and anything that will distract us and derail us you know they shouldn't have done that that's not right that's not fair that's inappropriate how could they do that there was nothing wrong with that person why did they fire him you know there's on and on and on there can be things that can really um shake us up especially if it's something within what we hold near and dear perhaps our church or church leadership um and you know we have to realize that all of us including them are human. We all make mistakes, and we all need to keep our focus on Christ. And I venture to say all of us fail to do that at times. You know, we're a whole lot better of a person when we do keep our focus on Christ and what he can do through us and for us, rather than uh, allowing things that come our way or that we see happening offend us. And when I say offend, sometimes it means personally, you know, we get offended with somebody says something about us. How could they do that or do something directed at us 
or to somebody else. Maybe it could be a, a loved one or somebody that we, you know, hold dear in our heart. If they, somebody attacks them in some way, we get offended, you know, and it's like, is that appropriate? Should we be offended? Or should we just reach out to the Lord in prayer and say, hey, you know, Lord, you know what the situation is. I pray for your help and guidance in that, you know, rather than get all worked up over it and maybe have harbor bad feelings towards other people. Um, because we don't necessarily know all there is to know about a given topic. Um, so, it's important that we keep our focus on Christ. Keep in mind that Lucifer, Satan, is going to try to de derail us in whatever way he can. It doesn't matter how, as long as he gets us out of the boat, if you know what I mean. Um, and there's all kinds of ways he's going to try to do that. And so we need to keep our focus and not allow right or wrong things around us to impact us in a negative way. Um, so we should, we should be showing goodness and mercy and reveal the true character of God whenever and wherever possible. In John 17 verses 18 and 23, it says, as you sent me into the world, I sent them into the world. I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. God has sent all of us into the world. He didn't say we are to judge other people or to be offended when things are not done right. He says we are to um, show his love. That doesn't mean only when things are good. That just surely means when things aren't good as well, huh? Look at what Christ did. He showed God's love to the world, and they were out to kill him. That's pretty serious. And he still endeavored to show God's love in spite of their underlining intentions. <clears throat> Jesus sends, uh, sends in us a letter to our family, to our friends, to our neighbors, to our coworkers, to our church members, to our church leaders, to everybody and anybody. He sends a letter through us to them. He wants us to share his love to all these people, whether they're doing right or wrong, to us or to our loved ones. Doesn't matter. He wants us to show our love to them regardless our life and character should be representing Christ to others and make his him appear attractive as it really is. If we take a look at Matthew 5, 16, open your Bibles up, if you will, and join me. Matthew 5, 16. It says, in the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and praise your Father in heaven. So we are to be a light to the world. Now that means that we're to be a light in a dark world, in a world that is filled with bad things. And they're going to be happening all around us. They are. But they, when they get close to home we tend to get worked up over it. And it's, you know, it's understandable to not want to see the bad things that happen to us, around us, or to others that we love. But we need to keep our focus. Don't lose focus on what God has laid out for us in terms of sharing his love, even when things aren't the way we want it to be. If we're gloomy and murmuring and complaining about this, that, or the other thing, we give, a, we give a false representation of God in the Christian life. This gives the impression that God is not pleased to have his children happy. And in this, we bear false witness to God. If you take a look at Ecclesiastes 5.19... Ecclesiastes 5.19... Uh, 
That's a small book. It's hard to find. Ecclesiastes 5.19. Then I realized that it is, I'm sorry, that's verse 18. Verse 19. Moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. God wants us to be happy. He doesn't want us to go around sad-faced and gloomy. He wants us to be, have a smile on our face, to accurately represent the love of our creator um, and our God. Satan is exalted when we lead others into unbelief and despondency and mistrust of God, doubting his willingness to save us. Satan wants us to believe that God is lacking compassion and pity filling the imagination with false ideas concerning our loving creator. We often fix our minds upon the negative and what other Christians or leaders should or shouldn't be doing. There's plenty of negative things in the world and none of us are perfect, but let's focus on the positive and encourage others with what they are doing, what they are doing right, of course. If we take a look at Philippians 4, 8, this is a good, um, text that illustrates this point. Philippians 4. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Our focus should be on the positive. We know there's bad things happening, negative things, but let's focus on the positive. Let's look at people for the positive that is happening and try to encourage them and, and uplift them. Show them God's love and show them that being a Christian is, brings joy and peace and happiness. If you don't have joy, peace, and happiness then something's wrong. Even Christ had joy, peace, and happiness when he had people trying to kill him. We need to demonstrate that we can have that joy and peace and happiness even amidst the difficulties and trials that come our way. Um, <clears throat> there's, a, um, there's a story um, that Ellen White tells of a lady who was in a in deep distress, and she asked Ellen for some words of encouragement. And uh, the night after she received the letter, Ellen dreamed that she was in a garden, and one who seemed to be the owner of the garden was conducting her through its paths. And she says, I was gathering the flowers and enjoying their fragrance when the sister when this sister, who had been walking by my side, called my attention to some unsightly briars that were impeding her way. There she was, mourning and grieving. She was not walking in the pathway, following the guide, but was walking among the briars and the thorns. Oh, she mourned, is it not a pity that this beautiful garden is spoiled with these thorns? Then the guide said, let the thorns alone, for they will only wound you. Gather the roses and the lilies and the pinks. Have there not been some bright spots in your experience? Have you not had some precious seasons when your heart throbbed with joy in the response to the Spirit of God? When you look back into the chapters of your life experience, do you not find some pleasant pages? Are not God's promises like the fragrant flowers growing beside your path on every hand? Will you not let their beauty and sweetness fill your heart with joy? The briars and thorns will only wound and grieve you. And if you gather only these things and present them to others, are you not, besides slighting the goodness of God yourself, preventing those around you from walking in the path of life? It is not wise to gather together all the unpleasant recollections of past life, its iniquities and disappointments, to talk over them and mourn over them until we're overwhelmed and discouraged. A discouraged soul is filled with darkness, shutting out the light of God from his own soul and casting a shadow upon the pathways of others. Thank God for the bright pictures which he has presented to us. 
let us group together the blessed assurances of his love that we may look upon them continually. Isn't that a good lesson for all of us? There's going to be the thorns, but let's not worry about those. Let's look at the flowers. Let's look at the roses and look at the positive things in life. There's plenty of the other. We'll never be a short supply of the negative as long as this earth lasts as it is. But let's focus on the positive and then we can uplift Jesus in that process. Just like Danielle said earlier today, when she sang the gl glory to God, it brought her joy. And then anybody listening would be brought joy also, right? But if she was mourning and complaining and groaning, she's going to be bringing herself down in terms of her attitude in life and everybody around her. So we want to make sure that our countenance is pleasant. If you're happy, show it. And if you're not happy, go to the Lord in prayer and ask for joy and peace in your heart. Because he has that to offer now, today. We don't have to wait until we get to heaven to have joy and peace in our heart. Um, <clears throat> when, uh, when Satan tempts you to breathe not, a, breathe not a word or doubt of darkness, if you choose to open the door to his suggestions, your mind will be filled with distrust and rebellious questions. If you talk about out your feelings, every doubt you express not only reacts upon yourself, but it's a seed that will germinate and bear fruit in the lives of others. And it may be impossible to counteract the influence of your words. You yourself may be able to recover from the season of temptation and from the snare of Satan, but others who have been swayed by your influence may not be able to escape from the unbelief you have suggested. How important that we speak only those things that will give spiritual strength and life. And by the way, that story and a lot of those thoughts are taken from Steps to Christ. Um, the, the very, I think it's the last chapter, actually. Very good. So those are excellent concepts that we should be thinking about and remembering to focus on Christ, focus on the positive in life. When we focus our attention on Christ, we won't be distracted by our enemy trying to change our focus. It could be trials, disappointments, things people say or do, anything that causes us to take our eyes off our creator. Um, in Hebrews 12, 1 to 3, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And in John 10, it's 7 to 10, it says, Therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the gate that, for the sheep. All who, who, I'm sorry, all who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and he will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. God wants us to have life and have it to the full. And we're only going to have that if we have Christ in our hearts and, and allow him to shine out from us. Allow him to, to put a smile on your face. Allow him to give you joy and peace and happiness, knowing that he is with us every single moment of the day. He's going to help us with every single trial that comes our way. We don't have to worry about all the stuff around us. Just focus our attention on Christ, and he will guide us as to how to deal with all those situations. But if we look at those situations in the positive, how can God help me bring good out of these things? What can God bring good out of, or what can he use me for to bring good out of these bad situations? Those are the kinds of things that we should be praying about and asking God, help me to 
be your hands, your feet, your mouth to bring good out of the bad that is all around us. Nothing should offend us. We should not allow anyone in our home, work, church, or anywhere else offend us. We should, not be, we should be secure in our relationship with Christ that nothing around us will shake us. Take a look at Psalms 119. <clears throat> Uh, this is the uh, NIV version in most of the cases. Uh, see, Psalm 119, 165, verse 165. Psalm 119, 165. Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. <clears throat> Great peace have they. You know, um, when, when we allow Christ to live within us, we are going to have the great peace that this verse talks about. Um, you know, when it talks about the law, the law, is the, the Ten Commandments is a transcript of God's character. And God is love. And so the commandments are all about love how we are the relationship we have with not only god the first four commandments but our relationship with our fellow human beings it's all about love treating others as we should treat them and so when we have god's love in our hearts he'll help us not only keep those commandments in putting our relationship with our, him and our fellow men in an appropriate way, but he'll fill us with the joy and peace that goes with it. And so it all comes as a package, but it comes as, a re, as we have that time with our creator, we focus on him as, the, as, um, as a relational God. He wants a relationship with us. And that relationship is what's going to make the difference. That is what our focus should be on, and everything else will fall into place. When we spend time with God, <clears throat> we're going to um, be a much more pleasant person to live with because he's going to rub off on us, <laughs> and that's what we want. Christ went to church even when the church leaders were trying to kill him. He was loving, considerate, concerned about everyone, even those trying to kill him. We should follow this example in all aspects of our life, in our marriage, in our church life, in our relationships with our co-workers, our neighbors, our friends, our family, everybody. We should seek for their best, their good, their, and show them Christ's love. <clears throat> If Christ could do that to those that were seeking his life, surely we can do that to those that come in, we come in contact with. I venture to say that very few of us ever have had anyone seeking to kill us. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It does. But by and large, I venture to say that we haven't had that extreme happen in our lives for most of us, okay? <clears throat> but even if we have, Christ is still our example. In that, even in that drastic a situation. We need to look around to see what we can do to help and encourage others, rather than being self-absorbed and focusing on ourselves. Let's take a look at Galatians 6.10. And you know, this, this sermon is just as much for me as it is for anybody else. We all need to keep our focus on Christ. Galatians 6, verse 10. <clears throat> Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Keep our eyes on Christ, not letting anyone to um, cause us to lose our focus. If we, if we allow others or circumstances to offend us, 
we must not be sacrificed with Christ. We must have let we must let go of that self selfish nature, um, and turn that over to the Lord. Then we will be when we when we give that situation to the Lord, and we allow Him to live within us, then we can put our selfish desires aside and our inward focus and humble ourselves before the Lord. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at Romans 6.6. 6. Romans 6.6. 6. For we know that our old self is crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that he should no longer be... Uh, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. <clears throat> so the key here is let our selfish, self-focused desires um, push, the, give those over to the Lord so that we will not be focusing on ourselves, but on Christ and what he would have for us. In Psalm 119, 165, it says, Great peace have they which love thy law. I read that. And nothing shall offend them. Psalm 51, 10 says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast or unwavering spirit within me. And in Isaiah 26, it's 23, uh, verses 3 and 4. So Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, it says, You will keep him in perfect peace. Let's see. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord is rock eternal. <clears throat> There's just so many passages that talk about this idea of putting our focus on Christ and allowing him to live within us. That is the key. Knowing what brings true joy and peace and happiness, as well as eternal life, we need to tell all we know what is coming so that they will be warned and have the opportunity for eternal life with Christ and have joy and peace in their hearts. So first off, we need to make sure that our focus is on Christ. And then we need to share that with others. Share what Christ can do in the lives of those you come in contact with in, in whatever way you can. Allow the Lord to guide you in how to share your faith with them. Um, in Galatians 6.10, it says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. <clears throat> Colossians 1, it says, I have, become, I have become its servant by the commission of God, gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Christ in us, the hope of glory, is um, that mystery that can transform your lives and transform the lives around you. And so allow Christ to live in you so that you can then bring light to them. And they will, you know, when somebody sees how you respond in a positive way to something bad that happens, that brings attention to that. In other words, if they see how you respond in a good way to some catastrophe or something, some bad thing that somebody did towards you, and they see that you don't respond in kind, that will bring attention to that and give, you know, in various times, people may inquire as to why you wouldn't respond in a, res in a negative way towards something that was negative towards you. And that can be an opening wedge and door for you to share that God's love and his, um, him living within your heart is what can make that difference. And it can make a difference in their lives too, if they'll let Christ live within them. First Peter 5, six to, um, starting with verse 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 
Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. So, um, in, uh, in conclusion, this, um, um, in Corinthians 4, 18, 2 Corinthians 4, 18, let's take a quick look at that. 2 Corinthians 4.18. It is written, I believe, therefore, I have spoken with the same. Let's see, is that right? 1 Corinthians 4.18. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's, that's the wrong verse. My, sorry about that. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So... Fixing our eyes on what is unseen, in other words, on Christ. We can't see him literally, but we can um, know that he is with us. And if we spend time with him on a regular basis, he will transform our character. And others will be able to see his love shining through us. And that is the goal. So... um, one, uh, one last quote that I'd like to share, and it's, it goes along with um, the idea that it's so important we share our faith with those around us. Um, taken from Christian Service, page 169, it says, There are some now claiming to be followers of Christ, who in the judgment will be confronted by their friends and neighbors to whom they might have pointed out the way of salvation but whom they allowed to remain unwarned. Then will they hear the terrible words, why did you not tell us the things you claimed or believed? Why did you not seek to help us understand the truths of God's word? Why did you not do all in your power to warn us before it was everlastingly too late? You never told us these things that would have helped us to prepare to meet our God in peace. You allowed us to come up to judgment unwarned and unsaved. We don't want anyone to tell us those words. We want to make sure that we're doing all that we can to allow Christ's love to shine out through us so that they will be warned. Um, Warned in the sense that they'll have opportunity to learn about Christ. We can't force them. We cannot... um, Make them um, seek after God, but we can be that Christian witness to help them see what Christ's life is in your life. So um, allow the Holy Spirit to work through you and to shine through you so that those around you will see his love. And then it's up to them whether they respond or not. But you want to be... um, You want to to share and show God's love to them whenever and wherever possible. So let us not get distracted by the wrongs all around us. Let us walk with God each day, moment by moment, and fix our eyes on Jesus and reach out to others to encourage and lift up and to point them to our loving Savior before it is too late. So uh, if anybody's interested in a copy of the notes that I was um, referring to, there's more on them in them that I was able to share. They're out in the foyer. And for those on Zoom, you could just send an email and let us know if you'd like a copy. Um, So shall we bow our heads? Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you for your many blessings. And dear Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to lead and guide each one of us. We want to be um, the witness you want us to be to those around us. We want to we have the peace and joy that only you can give us. We want to share that joy and peace to those we come in contact with, that everyone 
will have an opportunity to, um, to see the love that you have for each one of us and to experience that love and that joy. Help us, Lord, to, uh, to represent you in all that we do, say, and think. Guide us, I pray, each step of the way, because <clears throat> challenges come our way, and it's hard to deal with those challenges, but you've promised to be with us always, to help us through each and every one. And I pray that we'll be open to your Holy Spirit to guide and direct us in every way, be drawn closer to you each and every day. Help us to spend that time with you that we need to uh, each day to um, be drawn closer to you and allow you to work through us that we'll be ready for your soon coming. In Christ's name, amen.